Hey up guys, Ricky here with a quick message. If you didn't know, I have written a book. There's links for how to get to that in the video description below and I'll put a little card up here so that you can click on that if you want to support my work here on the channel. Back to the lesson. Hey up guys, in this lesson, what I wanted to do was to show you a little exercise, a kind of a drill, if you will, that I do a lot so that I can explore the sound of chords. I like to take two chords and I like to play them in all the positions that I can find up the neck. Now these just happen to be the ones that I like the sound of. It's not going to be just a rigorous run through what chords live where. This is going to be a bit of artistic license because it's the sounds that I'm after and where I find those sounds and where I can transfer those sounds. The two chords I'm going to pick on are C and G from the key of C major. For this example, these two chords, they're related. You're going to change from C to G a lot. So it makes sense that when you do this exercise you pick a pair of chords that you know you are going to change between a lot like a minor and f f and g b flat and f etc and don't shy away from harder named chords make sure you do those as well this is a drill to help you expand your chord vocabulary the first chord i'm going to do is my good old fashioned c major grip here this is the cowboy version down here in the first three frets where we learn most of our chords and if you are stuck down down here then this exercise is definitely going to help you to move up the neck as well. I like to play a C like this one because the pink is free I can do lots of decoration with the pinky there I can add another fifth up here I can turn it into an add nine I can even turn it into a seven if I want there but particularly I love this little sus four I can add on here so all these different sounds, you've got to explore these. You should see where your chords live and how you can create a map and then use that to create interesting chords. Then you might want to watch this video here. There's the C chord. Now, for years, I played the G chord like this. And this is what I think of as the old school Bob Dylan style. And then I discovered this shape here where we have two fingers on. What we're doing is we're getting rid of a third and we're adding another fifth there, which smooths out the sound. And to be honest, it just sounds more settled and more stable than this version because this version has two thirds in it and they rub against each other when we hear them. So there's the stable version and there's this version. But then what happened is I discovered this cheat version. Now, just because it's a cheat doesn't make it any less valid. And this is a one finger G chord, guys, because if you've got some muting going on, then you can get away with the minimum technique to make a thing happen on the guitar. So here's the G. I'm muting the A string here and I'm not playing the thin E string. When I get to the thin E string, what I do is I do a rest stroke with my pick on that E string there just to stop it. There's the G. That's a G chord. All the ingredients are there that you need for a G chord. So if anybody tells you that isn't a G chord, well, you know, the pianist might disagree with you because this is exactly what a piano player would play. These three strings here are what would be available in the right hand. And this would be the note you played in the left hand. Because you know the chord police are out there. They will always tell you that there is a better way to play any chord. The thing is, as long as that chord makes sense to you, who cares what anybody else thinks? That's the key to it all. So look at that. We've got C, with that lovely C sus4 that I had there, that I had there, and then I can just change that to a G. What I like about this G chord here is, if I put these two fingers on here, I get a C over G chord, and that's really rootsy feeling. And I dig that sound, so that's why I play the G like this with this one finger. It is kind of to cheat because I am a little bit lazy and we are all looking for efficient ways of playing chords. Which moves me over to the next portion of the neck. So we've dealt with this area. Now we're just going to move up to the 3rd, 4th and 5th fret here and play something in this area so that we've got every area covered. And the goal is to find the C and this G chord in any position we have so that we can change the voices, the textures and probably be a little bit more efficient in our chord changes. This is going to involve the bar chords. This is an A-shaped bar chord. This is holding down the A shape there. And then all I'm doing is I'm barring from the A string on the third fret there. I'm not playing the E string in this, so I'm letting the tip of my index finger just mute that string out there. 
So that gives me my C there. Now I can elect to let that note ping on the bright end there, but not always, it doesn't always matter. There's the full sound, but to be fair, you get the full chord by just playing the A, D, G and B strings. It's up to you, it's what flavour do you want? These notes that we're playing here, these are the ingredients, what are you putting in your cooking? What are you making here guys? So it's up to you what flavours you want to put in. Just so happens that we get another bar chord. I know you might be looking for cheats to avoid bar chords, but sometimes you just have to play them. There's the C and here we get an E shaped G. There's the root note for the G here on the third fret. So there's the G there guys. So let me just compare those first chords that I did, which was this C here. C to the G, here's a C, C to a G there. Now these guys, these are more stable. If you're after a more stable texture, then this is where you're gonna find that more stable texture. But the cool thing about this is, this involves open strings. So with open strings, we get a more of a ringing sound, a little bit more open and a bit more bell-like. That texture is different from this texture. And that's important for when you put in chord progressions together. If the song requires a more stable sound, then you're probably gonna use bar chords. If you want something that's a little bit more expensive sounding, then the first port of call to get into for more lush sounding chords is inversions. And this is gonna be the next one we're gonna play. We've got C and G here, we've got C and G here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the back end of this A shape here. I'm going to turn this into an inversion. This really should be a G shape and you can play it like a G shape like this. But what I like to do is I like to play this as a first inversion. I'm coming from the E here and that is the third of this C chord. So if I play this here, I'm not playing the E string, I'm not playing this E string. So I've got this little shape here. Don't worry guys, there is a PDF with all the chord diagrams there for you. So this is a fancy way of playing the C. This is a first inversion. And this would be called C slash E. You'll find that a lot of your slash chords generally tend to be inversions of other chords. That is the C over E. But I'm just thinking of it as a way of playing a C, but a little bit more expensive and lush sounding. So listen to this, more stable. This one, more ringing. Okay, so we've got the C over E here. Now what I need is a G chord, and what I'm gonna do is in this area, I could play a D shape like this. This gives me a G chord, because if you think about it, this is D. If I move it up a step, it becomes an E. If I move it up a half step, it's an F. If I move it up a step, it becomes a G. If I play that chord here, and this is leveraging the cage system here, so play that there, but that might not be the best way to play it. And if I want this expensive lush sound of an inversion, then an easy way to play it would be, there's the D shape, if I take this note here and I chuck it over onto the thick E string, watch this. Take that there, nice and bright, nothing wrong with that, you could use that if that's the sound that you're after. Nice bright sound there, but if I just switch over there, you might want to use your thumb and keep both of those ideas in there. I prefer to play it like this. And then there is C to a G, and that's a different experience to, which is a more stable and direct sound. So this one, a little bit more lush. This brings me on to the next position. We were here before, now we're moving up to the next three frets. And when we move up to these next three frets, what we've got to do is we've got to go back to the bar chords here. And I'm going to play this C chord as a bar chord. Now, if you recognize the shape, which you should do, because it was the same shape that we used for the G chord down here. And you could indeed switch between these two if you want in. And that might be a nice sound because you get that sliding sound on the bass note. That might be a texture that you're trying to put into your chord changes. What we also have is we have a G just underneath here. This is a less common shape. This is gonna be a C shape. So what I do, 
put my pinky on, the G note here, and I roll out a C shape. Hopefully you can see that's a C shape. I've got my first finger free. It's gonna feel awkward and there are ways around this. We can practice going up like this and then putting a bar on and then moving up a half step each time or going backwards that way, just finding your way around it. But this one, it's worth learning because what's good about it is if I take this finger off, I get a lovely major seven chords which is super romantic and lush. But there's the full major chord that I want there. And that is a super voicing to go with this. And you can see the efficiency and the economy of movement between these positions there. That is how we would play a C to a G in this position. We've covered all the neck so far, which means we've just got a little bit of the neck to finish with. And when I do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another inversion, and this is a superb inversion. This shape, believe it or not, is evolved from a D major shape again. So we had this D shape idea here again, and this is evolved from that as well. What we've got is we've got this E, which is the third in the chord, but what we do is we build a power chord here on the middle two strings and that gives us a root and a fifth and what we need to do is we need to find the third on the E string here and I'll just show you a little trick that is the major third there because if I planted that there as my D shape you could see that would be my third there what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of these two fingers and I'm switching this root note down onto the D string to do that I have to change my fingering slightly and this is a lovely shape. I'm only playing the E, the D, and the G strings there. I'm missing out the A string, the B string, and the E string. Now here's the little trick. This is a major third. If I lower that down, I'm gonna get a minor. That would be a C minor chord. So there's major, there's minor. You can hear how that sound shifts there. But that, for all intents and purposes, it's still got the notes C, E and G in it. They're in a different order because it is a first inversion. The last chord we need to find is our G because remember we're just switching from C to G and that's it, but we're doing it all the way up the neck. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go for our A shape again. So we've got five R three from our A shape there. I can bar across there. Yes, that is a bar chord. And if you struggle with the bar chords then what you could do is play the A shape like this and hold that fifth there and just play the bottom four strings is completely up to you but remember when we had this A shape before down here when we played the C what we could do is we could move that into that first inversion using that A shape as a bar here and this arched third finger that third finger is super arched there this one's flat this is arched so that you can clear those strings and you're not gonna mute any of those there play the same thing here and you could even do that as an exercise switching from this first inversion down to this first inversion here this is the C this is the G and as you've noticed we've gone to the 12th fret which means that we have started again so you can just build your shapes yes the C shape is going to be a little bit trickier the frets are a lot narrower and you're going to have to bar to get that shape there but it's the same shape in principle the thing with this exercise or drill if you will is about creativity and what you have to do now is you have to take this idea and you have to turn it into drills that you will actually use find the songs that you know and love and maybe already play and nominate two chords from a song and see how you can shift those chords going up the neck now if you get stuck chances are you could do with some signposts to help you navigate your way up the neck and the way you do that is using something called the cage system don't overlook the cage system I know there's some guys out there that say that it has no value but it really helps you to visualize your chords all over the neck and I'd encourage you to at least check it out because you don't know what you don't know and you can learn more about the cage system by watching this video here